long does it take for someone to get a medical cannabis card today in the state of Florida? 90 days, isn't it? 60 days, right now. <laughs> yeah. Right. It takes 60 calendar days from the moment you submit your document, your paperwork, to the day that you get the email from the state that's saying that you are eligible to, to get cannabis. It's taking 60 days. My patients are waiting 60 days to get a card where if they came to my office, not for cannabis, but wanted me to write a prescription for Marinol, which is synthetic cannabis, which is a Schedule 3 and yeah. a Schedule 1, like cannabis is, then I could write that order and within the hour, they would have it in their pocket. And then they can cut now, all they want because they've got the Okay, so we now waited three months to see the physician in Lakeland that will do the cannabis thing. That's three months. So once he writes his prescription, now we have to get the medical card. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. Another 60 days? No. No, you get that. Those are two totally different things. The 90 day rule has been waived. Oh, okay. That's, that, that was done away with. Oh. But regardless of that having been done away with, people still have to wait two months to get a card. We register them, they get an ID number, that they, they come into the office, and we give them the application, they can do it online, but it, it's still taking the state 60 days for the individual to get their card so that they can purchase medication. I need to be Here's the irony of, of, of what, this information. Um, about four years ago, I went to an uh, EMT doctor, your nose and throat, because I had a chronic bleeding on my right side muscle. Happens to be that I have a nasal pharyngeal cyst, benign, and it's to be removed. There was no waiting period to spray cocaine spray. Yeah. They actually sprayed it with schedule two. Schedule two. And they, there was no waiting period. They uh, sprayed it, uh, sit back, put up. Bright light, uh, two minutes later, three minutes later, laser removed, here it is. And uh. there's a waiting period that really moved me, this statistic that 15 patients died while waiting for approval. And that's, there's something still that needs to be done. There was like no compassion you. in that compassionate care act. I'd like to ask. Yes. Um, because we deal with so many seizures, things like that, what is your experience with what's going on in Florida and your epileptic patients with treatment, with uncontrolled? Everybody know that question? The question was what my experience is or has been with children that, or patients that have epilepsy. Um, the bulk of my patients, um, well, my star patients, um, a young boy in South Florida who has Dravet's, uh, was having two to three hundred seizures a day and was on five anti-epileptic drugs. Some of the medications that the child had been given were medications that were for veterinary medicine, were medications for dogs to control their seizures, which was not FDA approved and was off-label. This is what was given to my, my little boy, because I call him my little boy. He's like, great. Anyway, so through an organization, the mom found me, and through all my advocacy and whatnot, they got a hold of me. They drove from Miami, got up at four in the morning, drove four and a half hours to get to my office with oxygen tanks, all the rescue medications, everything that they have to travel with, and their nurse to get to the office for me to evaluate them. But the state also said that I need to have two physicians sign off on a child below the age of 18. So now we had to get a letter from either one of their doc one of the child's doctors to sign off on it, or me find a doctor that was a colleague that was willing to sign off on this child. Fortunately, we got it. He waited his 90 days. Mom is dealing with all the seizures. We finally got him on the oils and Right now, last month when I saw him, uh, she told me that he's having six to seven seizures a month. Oh my gosh. Wow, awesome. <laughs> and we've got him off of four medications. He's only on one, which is clonazepam, mm -hmm. because that's, benzos are the devil. 
And so we still have them on clonazepam, and that's taken us a while to get them off, but we've gotten them off everything else. Holy I'm cow. removing the clonazepam can cause seizures, right? Exactly. Yeah, and so oh. it has to be done very, very slowly. Now you talk about children with seizures. You have children that have autism. Not personally, I only have two daughters, no. <laughs> yes, I do have patients with autism, multiple. They have autism, ADD, ADHD, or bipolar. I got a dad. And so, um, I love you. I got a dad. And uh, I spent 30 minutes on the phone with a neurologist, a pediatric neurologist, that the mom had found me online, wanted me to treat the child, but uh, and the child also has cerebral palsy, so he's got cerebral palsy, autism, and has um, ADHD. And the neurologist took me literally 30 minutes to have a conversation with him, doctor to doctor, for him to finally say at the end, all right, doc, I'll go ahead and write that letter just for the cerebral palsy. But for the ADHD stuff, that's a bunch of bullshit. Wow. That's okay, doc. As long as I get the letter, I don't give a shit. Write, write the letter. Really? You know, sign well, off on it. Well, right to the cerebral palsy and not for the other stuff. Where because it's cerebral palsy is one of the diagnoses yeah. on the list. It has to be on the list. No, 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 no. Okay, I understand that. But these things cause the cerebral palsy. Cerebral palsy is not a disability. I guess I would say it, I mean, it is. I mean, but. The other ones, the ADHD is what causes the cerebral palsy. It's the way I have been told and understand it. That notwithstanding, I'm just sharing the story. Don't kill the messenger. But am I correct, <laughs> am I correct in that thinking? Do not kill the messenger. The, the point is that we got the letter from him and now he's on the oils and he's doing a ton better and he's no longer on the medications that he was getting from the neurologist. But, but you had a... What kind of medicines was he on, if I can ask? Sure. He was on uh, muscle relaxers, so he was on Baclofen, he was on Benzos uh, for the seizures, he was on um, antipsychotic medication for the bipolar. Which one? Seroquel. Okay. He was on Seroquel, uh, which also causes obesity okay. and can cause uh, metabolic syndrome, causes diabetes. Uh -huh. um, he was on Adderall. And he's on none of those now, just. And they're all gone now, or? The majority are all gone, because again, it's a slow process yes. to wean them off. Oh, I understand that. So Very for slow. that reason, you know, it takes a minute to, to get it done. Now, is his weight a factor? Is he a heavier child than a? Well, he was a heavier child because, because of the cerebral. Now so that he's no longer on the cerebral, you know, he's. Has his weight come down? Slowly. Yeah, and he's more focused and he's more attentive and his muscle spasms are more relaxed and he's not convulsing or, you know. See, I'm going the opposite way. The child has lost so much weight, we're trying to get the weight back on because of the medicine she is on. Which they probably gave you a pill to, to make him hungry yes, because there exactly. was a pill. Oh, Lord. Now because, right. oh my God. That means a digestive and enzyme. She's increasing in medicine continuously. Behind you. Yes, ma'am. Oh. <laughs> Little guy. Oh, yeah. um, in my circumstance, my son is sick most of the time. Um, and of course, with the parents here, their children have skin separated, have some of the skin separated. Um, the doctors are saying that he is having muscle spasms, that they are not yet conscious, but will be. Can I use cannabis treatment to help him before he's having seizures? Like, can I, can I, help, can I use that as a plan to help him with his spasms? Do you want my answer or do you want the answer from the state? I want your opinion. Okay. <laughs> I want your answer. Okay. My answer is yes. Before we put him on a bunch of medications that we are eventually going to have to move him off of, let's go ahead and start with this and work Great with this. Question. Let's start with the natural and then build up. Okay? That's my. Go ahead and say, can you say that again, please? I said I just wanted to make sure that I'm not going to like do any harm by trying to treat it before it starts, you know. Like trying to help yeah, like prevention, not just prevention of you know, the seizures, but also helping him because, you know, like the spasms they keep him up at night. And, you know, like he hasn't let him sleep in because he 
With medicine. With medicine. Exactly, and that's what, what occurred with my patient with the brain cancer, that the doctor was telling her, let's just observe it, wait for it to get bigger so that we can do something about it. And so they're waiting for your child to have, you know, a condition that they can quote unquote treat, but the, he's already having or experiencing symptoms. So for that reason, <laughs> it's important to prevent it from getting to where it needs to. Now, the way the law reads is that we have to wait and for the, the individual to exhaust every possible conventional treatment before we can then put them on the cannabis. That's the way it says. So a lot of doctors will not do the recommendation for that specific reason because we have to wait for the child to be on medication and prove that it's not working, and it's the insurance model. How many patients do I see on a daily basis that I want to write a prescription for, and I get a note back that says you need a prior authorization and you have to have proof that that patient failed two, three, four medications before we can actually put him on the medication that you, doctor, believe would be the best medication for your patient. But actually, at his age or any, it would be much better to start now with this. Do you see how criminal it is? Wait, it's criminal. Right? It's criminal. So we don't get into all but the pharmaceuticals. I'm not disagreeing with you. Okay. And that, and that, was, the first, I got you. I that was the first leg of my answer. <laughs> but, but I have to separate my opinion I know. from I what the law, the law says. says yeah. Because I'm here to educate, not to stand on a soapbox and preach my okay, belief. So I'll say for you. Huh? <laughs> I'll say it for you. Thank you. <laughs> so, so, so to follow that up, because I, I understand what you're saying, and, and we've just spent over an hour discussing um, that amazing little boy, are there benefits to people in situations like that? I don't know if we're, seriously, we're not even close, but CBD, just CBD, is 100% legal. So we're, we're, is there any benefit to the CBD? without the THC before you get to all the, you do, do you know what I'm mm -hmm. trying to ask? Yeah. Without the legalities and all the hoops to jump through, it's, I, my understanding is there's, there's not negative interaction between CBD and other things that may be prescribed until all that. Okay. As Janelle explained this morning about the CBD and how it's the endocannabinoid system right. and how it works and how that system is in our bodies and the use of CBD is good for supplementation but also for therapeutic reasons and she did an right. amazing job explaining that. Right. That's the answer to your question. Okay. Now as far as interactions between CBD and certain medications, there are interactions. Mm -hmm. okay. It can cause um, some medications to work more and be it and cause, cause those levels to rise and cause the child to be or the individual to be toxic and so you have to monitor their blood levels to make sure that they are not in a toxic range specifically Depakote that has a very narrow therapeutic range and so any deviation from that can cause the, the individual to be toxic and can cause them to have seizures so you need to be mindful of what medications the child is on or the individual is on as you incorporating it, it the CBD. Good, she could talk about those right. and so that's why it's important to have a physician that does know what the hell is going on and is not strictly motivated by financial gain because it's, it is happening and it is going to happen. And so it's important to find someone that has the understanding and the concept and is willing and wanting to hold your hand through the process <laughs> rather than just giving you a recommendation and saying, Okay, figure good luck, out. figure it out. And then they go to the dispensary and a bud tender is telling them, oh, what the doctor recommended, you don't need that. This is what you really need because that's what they have in because stock and that's what they're have pushing. specific strain mm -hmm. yes, for specific. Yes, oh, okay. yes ma'am. So cool. Back to the child with the CP that you got written on, okay? Question. 
Did the child have seizures? Yes, the child okay. did have seizures. What about a child with the CP that doesn't have the seizures? Would you recommend that for him for any reason, just for the CP or? Yes, ma'am. CP is one of the 10 diagnoses in Amendment 2 in the state of Florida so and in Senate Bill 8 it, it, it relaxes them to be mm -hmm. able to? It controls the muscle spasms. Mm -hmm. That is one of the chronic conditions that cause muscle spasms, which was one of the original diagnoses, and now cerebral palsy is actually named in Senate Bill 8A. Okay. Would, um, I have a, co a quadriplegic patient that I had told him that he might want to check, you know, seek cannabis therapy because his, um, the jerkingness in the back of him is just not happening, and he's been a quad for six years. So, um, is it is cannabis muchly effective for this jerking, uncontrollable jerking movement that he, muscles? I guess it is. Yeah. Yes, because it works. Parkinson's disease is one of the conditions that is uh, recognized in the state of Florida for the use of cannabis. So that jerky, the uncontrolled tremors, as well as movement disorders, like Huntington's chorea. I have a few patients that have Huntington's. And so we're managing those as well with, with cannabis. I have seen that in, in the dental chair. I have a patient with Parkinson's, and uh, he'll take his oils, his chain goes away, and I can do the root canal. Really? What about so, he's a retired dentist. So you've seen it for yourself then? Well, I've seen many things that I believe because of you. Thank you. <laughs> I have seen, uh, Trisha has put uh, videos of Noah. Noah. And uh, in the last two months, she's been posting how he opens his gorgeous eyes. All the seizure goes away immediately. And you, you have to see and believe it. I wanted to, uh, we're, we're getting to our end, but but uh, I just was told by Ron, who's running the show. He said, take as much as you want, you guys got eat and everything. So I want to um, compare the pharma. And I think if I, if I mention to you right now, epinephrine pain, what is the first thing that comes to your mind? The price. The price. We all remember about two years ago, an epinephrine pen, every pen, yeah. costs $900, most insurance don't cover, most parents they have to have at least three, one in the car, one in the kid, make sure the school has one, if not you're going to get that third one to the school, and one for your house, and we all knew how media make a big round, and I give them that part of the media make a big round of applause for bringing that to the table, that a $13.90 Production, marketing, delivery to our um, dealer, pharmacies, whatever. It was $930. And the CEO was taking 40 plus million dollars a year in bonus in two years. So 20 plus, 20 plus million. I got sick to my stomach. And immediately the awareness the media created in this particular issue, it created a big hole in this company. How is from the medical point of view, your experience, how do you see the pharma that we have got tremendous information today, uh, representative talking about essential oils, how is the pharma that is legally functioning in our country compared to prices, coverage, insurance, how affordable it is, how expensive it is, how, how is that comparing to the many other medical drugs we have discussed in this presentation? One of the first questions that patients ask when they call my office is, anyone know? How much does insurance cover this? Insurance. Does insurance cover this? And my response is? No. no. <laughs> I laugh. No, insurance does not cover this. Okay? Why? Because insurances are dictated by Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, which is a federal entity. And because it is a Schedule One drug, yeah. it is federally illegal. And as a result, we cannot accept insurances for it. As far as the medication goes, insurances do not cover for that either. Okay? But they'll pay for Marinol. They'll pay for Marinol. They will pay for opiates. They will pay for, they would rather pay for opiates rather than anything else. Anyway, uh, or for the Suboxone, which is the treatment for 
opiate dependence, and uh -huh. they won't pay for the Suboxone. You need a prior authorization and everything. Roller coaster. So, so that's it. So, 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 so as far as the cost goes, um, one of the dispensaries in, in Orlando, or in the area rather, um, for a 300 milligram cartridge, it's $45. Oh. For a 600 milligram cartridge, it's $90. So if you add the two, you get 900 milligrams, which is just shy of a gram. You're looking at $134 for just a little oh bit my less gosh. than one gram. How long does that last? Uh, it depends how I dose you. If it's a child, it'll last a long time. It's if not it's a child, like a in the back, that may or may not be an experienced user, that's pissing in the wind, for lack of a better term. But they talk about two milligrams or something like that, normal use of it or something? Mm. No, I think that's okay. illegal. Like, if, if you have less than one gram, uh, you're not, at least in Orange County, mm -hmm. I know, you're not in uh, any. If you have a card, you're even better. As a matter of fact, no, don't be in citation. If you have uh, less than one gram without a medical card, mm -hmm. if you have a medical card, you can walk around. Uh, I think there's limitation about one. Flower. Use it and, and right. If you, have, you yeah. if you have a card, you cannot use it in public. You cannot use it while you're driving. Now, as far as not being able to use it in public, <coughs> I used to vape nicotine. Let's say he's my patient, and he's vaping cannabis, and we're standing side by side. Is anyone going to say anything to either one of us? 